And praise the Lord. While we were praying on the prayer line, as clear as you hear my voice that came to me, Psalms 119, get the people, turn the people back to how precious the word of God is. Turn them and then use the word as an example to show them that this man, this man's testimony, this man's testimony can benefit us because praise God. God, oh, if he don't do nothing else, he going to back up his word. And wait a minute. I get encouragement when we have testimony service. I get encouragement. But here's the testimonies. We have 66 book of testimonies of God's faithfulness to mankind, to a people that saw what our eyes have never saw. They experienced what I, we never experienced. Amen. Hallelujah. And yet, it, 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 it escapes me how they could turn and serve something else other than God. I, I don't get it. Other than the nature that's in man now. Worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Reach over and get your Bibles and turn with me to Psalms 119. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not going all the way. But we're going to begin re pick it up in that first verse. Psalms 119 and verse 1. Read. Blessed are the undefiled. In Blessed the, are the undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony. They that keep his testimonies of what church? Blessed. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Read. And that seek him with the whole heart. Lord have mercy. That get me. Because that's exclusive. Nothing else. He's not double minded. This man is not double minded. He refused to let anything come into his heart other than God's word. And wait a minute. While you perceive a thing, we determine whether or not you will continue to go in a certain way. How you perceive something. When we look at God's word and we actually hold God's word up as it is the lifeblood of every saint, my God, we'll never be in confusion. Amen now. On last time I was here, stood in this capacity, I talked about the curse being poured out on this nation here. I, I, we're not going to go there, but in, in, in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, God pronounced blessing and cursing if they would just obey his voice. He would bless them. Amen. Now, he would bless the fruit of their body, the fruit of their, their cattle, the, the land. He would bless them. He would cause their enemies to come out one way and flee seven. He would make them the head and not the tail. They would lend the folks and not borrow. He's talking to them now that saw his works. Amen. Amen. Moses, knowing that his time was just about up, he gave his final address to these people. And he told them that the laws, the precepts, amen, praise the Lord, the cons uh -huh, the laws, the precepts, the statutes, the, the testimonies, all of those God gave you, he has not dealt with any nation under heaven like he's dealt with y'all. But he said, amen, praise God, but if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and his statutes and his precepts, all of these curses shall come upon you. And then not only these curses that he named in Deuteronomy 28, but he foretold them that you're going to get a king. Before that was a Samuel, amen, for Israel to reject and want a king. Before that was a Samuel, this man Moses in Deuteronomy 28 told him, you're going to get a king and that king going to lead y'all astray and y'all going into idolatry and I'm going to cause you to be put out this land. Sure enough. I, when I read that, I was not necessarily studying, I was just reading that 28th chapter. He said that you, 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 your, your, your cities would be besieged and the mamas and the daddies would eat one another for want. They would eat their children for want. Now you read it. God told Moses, you tell them, when you disobey me, when you go against known truth, 
You know how I want you to live. Then this is one of the curses that's going to come upon you. And then all of them that you don't need, they're going to take away. They're going to take them away while you're looking at it. It won't be any power in your hand to do anything about it. In 2 Kings, the, the, the sixth chapter, that, that took place. Well, it took place more than one time. But the king, that well, Jer, Jehoram then, this man was walking down by the wall and the woman up on the wall pleaded with the man because she and another woman decided to made an agreement. They were so hungry until she said, this woman, amen, praise the Lord, told me that we kill my son today and then tomorrow we'll kill her son and eat it. Amen now. Just what Moses said. Hallelujah. The curse was poured upon them. No nation has been blessed like this nation. Israel and nobody else. Amen now. In such a large capacity. America is, you can fit, I don't know how many Israel into America. And God has blessed us. He has blessed us. Hallelujah. Maybe if the word of God never came across the waters over to this nation here, we would have an excuse, but we don't. Amen. Amen. So I want to set the groundwork on, on how powerful God's word is on the, in the positive or the negative. The blessing will come, but the curse will come when God's people's hearts are turned away. As we read God's word, he says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony, that seek him with the whole heart. Read, son. They also do no iniquity. They do no iniquity. They, no iniquity means no iniquity. Read. They walk in his way. How, how do they not do iniquity by, by walking in his way? Y'all look this way here. Obeying God automatically disobeys Satan. Obeying or, or, or vice versa. Amen now. To choose God is to reject Satan. To choose Satan is to reject God. To choose God is to reject your own ambitions. Amen. See, there is a cross over here. This cross demands, not acts or compromises, this cross demands us to come out of ourselves. And, and, and I, I, when I study Psalms 119, that's basically what this man is saying. God, I can't do nothing without you. If you don't help me, I can't be helped. If you don't open my mind, open my spirit, open my understanding to what you're telling us in the law and in your precepts, and in your commandments, and in uh, Amen. If you don't help me to understand, then I ain't no help for me. So I'm surrendering myself to you. I'm committing myself to you. Hallelujah. I give myself to you. I'm gonna do just what I told Solomon. That in all my ways, I'm gonna acknowledge you. Because I know my only direction has got to come from you. If I put you first, you're not going to lead me in the path of unrighteousness. Amen. Read. For thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligent. Read. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy Lord statutes. have mercy. Lord have mercy. Read. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have. Notice, it. notice. If God direct my steps, amen, he's going to not direct me in a place. When I stand for God, when I live for God, he'll never let me bring up the real. He will never let me be ashamed. Hallelujah. Shame come when we become ashamed of who he is in our lives. And we try to lead a double life. This man understood this. That if you don't help me, I'm going the other way. Hallelujah. Read. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I have what? Respect. When I have what? Read it. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. That when word respect means that you're going to honor me when I'm not around. That's what that means. You wear my name like a wife, a, a, a sanctified wife. She'll honor her husband when somebody else comes toward her of the opposite sex. That man is going to honor his wife when the enemy will bring some woman. Amen. What I'm trying to get you to see, this man understood the importance of obeying God and then praying God, obeying what he did know and then seeking God, Sister Sandra, for what he didn't know. We 
ain't going to read it all, but down in there he said, Lord, I'm a, I'm a stranger here in this earth. I'm a stranger. I'm a foreigner. I don't know nothing about no devil, how he works, except you help me. Amen. Remember now, only on the back end of him and Bathsheba did he understand, amen, praise the Lord, that God was on the verge of taking his Holy Ghost away from that man. That's why we got him over in Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. And when you get down to the knit and the grip, he said, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Read it. Seven, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. Of what? Uprightness of heart. Read it. When I shall have when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. Yes, read. I will keep thy statutes. I will do what? Keep thy statutes. I will keep your statutes. Read it. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Read. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Read it. With my whole heart. Hold it. There it is again. With my whole heart. Read it. Have I sought thee? Now, a whole heart cannot be a double heart. A whole heart is not somebody that go whichever way the wind blow. They don't lean into whatever side they think is winning. Don't you fool yourself. Ain't nobody winning in this thing but God and God's saints. Amen now. Nobody. With my whole heart. Whole heart. Have I sought thee? Have I sought? Oh, let me know. And if you seek Jesus Christ, said you'll find. Hallelujah. If you seek him, you will find him. Hallelujah. Uh, hold right there. Hold what you got right there. I want Proverbs 29 and verse 11. I want that right now. Je Read. Now hold on, it's not a fool. Read that one more time. Where you at? Tell them where you at. Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. 11. 11. A fool utters all his mind. A, a fool does what? Utters all his mind. Now, apparently, this is no fool we're reading about in Psalms 119. Now, he's uttering to God, not men. You know, a fool will run their mouth. The Bible says a fool answer a matter before he ever hear it. Amen. That's a fool laugh. You, what would make him a fool? Because he thinks he has it. Come on. Going on. I have the answers. And there's only one answer. That's Jesus Christ. Read. Read. But a wise man keepeth it until he'll, afterwards. He'll keep his mind. He'll keep his mouth. Now, I wanted to go there. Let's go back to Psalms 119. Drop down to that 29th verse. Remove from me the Remove, way. Notice now, notice. Remove from me the way of lying. The way of what? Lying. Now, don't you think for one minute that none of us is above that spirit that comes to get you to lie. You never know what's really in you until you, you're confronted with that. Show enough. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what the word of God does for us? It, it purifies our motives and our heart. Amen. Because when we read God's word, we see ourselves in the scripture. Yes, we do. Either in the positive or the negative. You know, we got this saying now, Lord, show me me. Now, God has given the word to show us ourselves. Amen. As a standard. And then he said, now, this is what you come up to because it's not coming down. There's one, We all on a level playing field. Amen. I said a while back, a few messages ago, black man, Caucasian man, hallelujah, Jew, Gentile, whatever the race, whatever the color, all of us have one thing in common. That is a devil trying to destroy us. And the only shield, the only weapon we have to confront him is more powerful than he is, and that's the word of God. Why? Your word is truth. Jesus Christ said the devil is a liar, the father of the lie. He couldn't abide in the truth. You know what? What the abide means? He couldn't hang around the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible declared Peter told us, submit ourselves to God. 
Amen. And then James told us the same thing, to submit ourselves to God, to surrender ourselves to God, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Amen. But James 4 and 7, he says, submit yourself to God and he'll give you the power to resist that lying spirit. To resist that spirit of lust. I'm going to show you what I see in, 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 in Psalms 119. Hopefully some of you have saw this and praise God, you've got a new appreciation for this particular psalm here. Because it is a mirror of the heart of man. It is a mirror on the positive and on the negative. But it always reveals that we, as God's people, depend on God. It, re it reveals that we have to depend on God. We have to. So say that we got to. Hallelujah. I didn't ask to be in this way, but I'm glad I'm over here. I, I didn't ask for God to save me, but I'm glad he did. I didn't ask for directions in this world, in this world now, but he gave it to me. And then he told me, seek, seek. If it, huh? James told us, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraids it not. I need it. I got to have it. Hey, it's too late in the day. How for you to be running around here trying to figure your way out or find yourself. It's too late in the day. We got one enemy that's got a host of devils that amen, have been trained, amen, praise the Lord, to draw our attention. And that's what David is saying. Every spirit that comes against me that does not promote or lead me into this plain path or this precious way, it is a devil. And I won't be able to recognize the devil until you give me understanding. Open my eyes. It's in there. Read that one more time. Verse 29. 29. Read. Remove from me the way of lying. Read. And grant me thy law graciously. Yes. Grant me what? Thy law. Now what is he saying here? God give me understanding. Uh, when you grant something, that means that you give the word. You give the okay. How, you sign off on it. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, remove from me the way of lying. Now notice, lying is a way. It's a spirit that's got a way to lead us away from God. Give me that one more time. Psalm 119, 29. So remove, just I want Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. Remove from me the way of lying. Read. And grant me thy law gracious. Read. I have chosen the way of truth. I did what? Chosen the way of truth. I did what, church? have the ability to choose right or wrong, good or evil, God or the devil. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him, that's the choice, that's a free will choice, should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into this world to condemn us. We already condemned. But that we through him might be saved. He that believes or chooses him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed or he has not chosen God's way. Read, son. I have chosen the way of truth. I chose that way. Thy judgment. I chose to live for you. I chose. I, hey, I surrendered myself. I did a Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. I, I submitted my body. I present my body. And then I take that word. I take your word and renew my mind. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Read, son. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Yes, read. I have stuck unto thy testimony. Boy, when you get, when, how many of y'all ever got stuck in a mud hole? It seemed like the more you get to gas, the things sink deeper and deeper, huh? What this man is saying is what Sister Jessica pray all the time, many times when she pray. Lord, we want to go a higher height and a deeper depth. Well, what he's talking about here is getting off the surface and getting down into the middle. Come off the edge, get in the middle. Y'all look this way here. Just because we can help ourselves, sometimes in, in our lifetime, we think that we can make our own way. I'm okay. I can handle it. We can't handle nothing. Without, Jesus said it, without me, you can do nothing. Now that is a fool that think that they can handle 
the pressures of this life here. Therefore, the suicide rate them went up. Come on, talk to me. People more depressed today than they ever have. So we're reaching for idols. We're reaching for something to give us, amen, praise the Lord, completeness. We're reaching for something. Hallelujah. When God is the only one, he put in every one of us a void, and only he can fill that void. Hallelujah. I thank God he filled mine. He can fill yours. Read, son. 31, I've st I have stuck unto thy testimony. I did what? Stuck unto thy testimony. Read on. Oh, Lord, put me not to shame. Yeah, read. I will run the way of thy commandment. Notice, notice. In Proverbs, uh, praise the Lord, he says, ponder the path of your feet. We're told, amen, that he's our shepherd. He lead us in the path of righteousness. I did what with my feet? I will run the way of thy commandment. Read it. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. Read. Teach me, O Lord. Now you notice a lot of people don't want to be taught uh, this. Let me put it that way. They don't want to be taught this. Why? Because I got to alter the way I live. Hallelujah. I got to think. I'm going to show you how dangerous TV is. It, it's in here. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what preoccupies a whole bunch of God's folks. The world for that matter. But it's TV, internet, radio, devices that occupy God's people's mind. Read, son. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Read. And I shall keep it unto the end. Notice now, you teach me. That's your job, Lord. And I'm going to keep it. Read. That's why I need you to open my mind. I need you to open my spirit. I need you to give me an understanding because when I understand how something works, I can operate in it. Huh? Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But when you get the wisdom, you need understanding to know how to apply that wisdom. Read, son. Give me understanding. Give me understanding. And I shall keep thy law. I'll keep your law. Read. Yeah, I shall Tell them what verse you're in. Psalm 119, verse 34. Read. I shall observe it with my whole heart. Read with my what? Whole heart. That is again, saints. Read, son. Make me to go in the path of thy command. I love that. I make me, make me. Make me. In other words, praise God, if my if my mind or my heart is turning some other direction because you love me and you know I want to do right, you'll turn me into the direction that you would have me to go. It's not a sin to stray away. It's a sin to stray away and don't want to get back. Read. That's why it's so it's hard to when it's in the backslider. Show sure up. I'm talking about backsliding and hard. Still coming. It's, it's hard to tell them. They, they, don't, they will never receive the truth. And, and we'll set up in the church house and think we're all right when the devil just about got us where he wants us. There's a gradual thing now that the enemy is using in order to preoccupy our time. Show enough. It's right in here. Read, read. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. Read it. For therein do I delight. In your commandments I'll do what? Delight. Read. Incline my heart. How many of y'all know what delight means? It's deeper than just having joy. Delight in something mean, praise God. It's equivalent to what the Lord said. Wherever your treasure, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart gonna be also. If your oh Lord, I, I, I ain't gonna go there. Read, son. Incline my heart unto thy testimony. Read. And not to covetousness. Lord have mercy. Not to what? Covetousness. Ain't that the, the last one on the big ten? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor, huh? Anything that is thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet. Hebrews 13, verse 5, he said, man, praise the Lord, let us not be covetous. But remember, amen, but God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He told us, amen, to be content with such things as we had, didn't he not? Amen. Hallelujah, not to be covetous. Read, read, read. 37, turn away mine eyes. That's what I want right there. Brothers and sisters, y'all look this way here. I had read that, but I didn't get it. I had read it more than one time, but I didn't get it. Until yesterday. Turn, read it, son, read it. 37, turn away mine eyes. Turn from away my eyes. From, beho from beholding what? Vanity. Vanity. Pro uh, 
Solomon said, vanity of vanity. All the stuff that I tried to bring pleasure, all the stuff that I tried and involved myself in, I engulfed myself in, it brought me shame and disgrace. And it turned me from God. Sure enough. Vanity, vanity. What is vanity? It does not benefit you in the long run. It does not carry any eternal weight. It will not help you when we stand before God Almighty to give an account of the deeds that we've done in these bodies. Sure enough, vanity, something temporary in order to bring temporary pleasure. Something temporary to preoccupy our time. Something temporary. And we forsake the eternal. In order for the present moment. Y'all look this way here. Right now we're sitting in the present moment. The Lord delay is coming. There are going to be some moments after this. But at this particular time. God has ordained us to be in this moment. This particular time. This particular hour. Hallelujah. Not knowing what's going to befall us on tomorrow. Or later on today. We just don't know. This is why. The, the, the secret of the saints. The secret of the saints was this right here. A lot of them, the old saints, they didn't have a whole lot of education. But God gave them the word. He put it in their heart. Amen now. Hallelujah. Hey, what little bit they, they knew, they obeyed. And because they obeyed that, God gave them revelation. Men, men that didn't have any formal education, couldn't even read. Then God called them to preach. And brothers and sisters, they read this Bible like a Harvard scholar. Huh? Why? God put his word. He gave them understanding. A lot of people can quote scripture if they just don't understand. A lot of them don't understand what they quote. Hallelujah. Anybody can preach out the Bible, but to live the Bible in order to have the experience of God's word that you're preaching, that's a whole nother ball game. Why? We don't know God apart from his word. Amen. The Bible declares, amen, pray God. He has magnified his word above his name why because the word became flesh by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God who is the word of God Jesus Christ the master of all mankind hallelujah I like hanging over in them gospels amen praise the Lord I love it praise God when I read him walking on the water, that's real to me. Hallelujah. When I read him casting out the devil, amen, then giving the apostles power to cast out the devil, I believe that. I lay hold on that. Hallelujah. I embrace that. With my whole heart, I know it to be true. What now? But I know it to be true. John said, praise God, there are those that love, the, love Jesus Christ having not seen him. I love him. Lord, I love you. And I thank God that when, when that comes out of my mouth, he already knows. He already knows whether I love him or not. Amen. That's what blesses me. Hallelujah. It's foolish to hypocrite. Hallelujah. Just come clean. Come clean and then stay clean. How? By what? That ninth verse. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed down to until thy word. Read, son, turn away. Psalm 119, verse 37. Read. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken, quicken, quicken. Thou. Make me alive. I'm dying without you, Lord. When I get pulled off into vanity, amen, things that does not profit, amen, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah, then I become dead. Quicken me. My conscience is seared when I refuse to use my time wisely. Hallelujah. I don't know how many days I got left on this earth here, but I thank God that in my latter days, he gave me the wisdom to seek his face, get all the word in me that I can, because if Jesus Christ delays coming, we won't have Bibles. Amen. If he delays coming, the rapture, it's going to get rough. It's going to get tough than what it is now. We won't have the Bibles. The Bible in this nation and all over the world will be outlawed. Show sure enough. Hallelujah. So the, the time to store up the word of God, it's time to get full up with God's word. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen now. And none of us know it from cover to cover. So praise God, whatever time we got left, turn the TV off, turn everything off, get in the word of God. Pastor, you know I ain't got, I can't do that. I got other things to do. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. You make time for everything else that you want to do. Hallelujah. So when God's purifying word comes, I, 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 when I first got saved, it's a whole lot that I didn't know. But what I, when I found myself in the scripture in the wrong way, I said, God, thank you. And I won't be there no more. No, sir. And just like he said in Psalm 119, I determined not to do nothing but what you, you show me. You show me and I'll do it. I'll do something about it. You, you show me and I'll do something about it. And that, that I, can't, I can't do on my own. I'm going to depend on you. Why? I know you love me. If you didn't love me, you would never show me wh where I am on, on your scale. Everybody look this way here. Like God weighed up Belshazzar. You know, in, in the fifth chapter of Daniel, we're being weighed right now. You notice, I, uh, on last Saturday, last time I was here, I wrestled with a, three or four messages. Like I always do, like I did this morning. Amen. And it's clear as you hear my voice, we went to Daniel. Hallelujah. I read it, but I didn't prepare to preach it last time we was here. But it's clear as you hear my voice, we went there. And God gave me to show us that we run parallel to, the, to, to Israel, show sure enough. And Daniel, I said on last time I was with, the, with you, there's not a more heart-searching, soul-rending prayer in the Old Testament about a man praying for his mess and the mess of his folks than the ninth chapter of Daniel. And because that man got down in sackcloth and ashes, amen, pray, and he sought God, God revealed to him that y'all going to be down here 70 solid years. Yes, sir. God revealed it to him, Minister Green, only after he prayed did God open his understanding. He prayed before. Huh? He wanted to know what was going on before he prayed. And then when he went to God's word, he went and got the, the amen prayer, the parchment of, I, of Jeremiah. He began to read about what Jeremiah said they were going to go through because they rejected God. And brother, it broke his heart. Put him on his face. Church is opening up now so they can get back to normal. But many of God's people have not humbled themselves. We want to carry back into this thing the mess that we had before he shut it down. Our hearts are not clean. Our minds are not pure. We have other things going on in our lives that are more important than us turning away from our sin. Notice when we read in Daniel, you see, he didn't say they sin. He said we have sin. We, we, we. Hallelujah. I can respect a man of God like that. Hallelujah. I ain't been where I am now. Amen. And I ain't planning on being where I am now. In the future, the Lord delay is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I learned from David, when God show you wrong, repent. And do it quickly. Amen. And when I turn, amen, when God begin to show me things and praise the Lord, then I know it's just for me. First. It's for me first. Then it goes out to the people. And so when I got to, got over here in this 119, that verse stood out to me, that 37th verse and that 29th verse. Remove from me the royal line, amen, and then turn my heart, quicken my heart, and then right here, he said, praise what, what did he say? Remove from amen, my eyes. I want that 37th verse one more time. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Y'all look and this way here. He give us the word, but he's not going to reach out of heaven and turn your heart. He's not going to reach out of heaven and turn your mind. He's not going to reach out of heaven. A lot of things we cannot help but see. But I told you earlier, how you perceive something will determine whether you continue to watch it or not. Amen. I remember when Elizabeth was, was my baby. I think 
we just had Elizabeth. And we, we, we you know, I, I, I try to screen things, not Christian movies, but, but you know, uh, cowboy movies, uh, uh, musketeer movies, you know, where I know they ain't going to be doing nothing and saying nothing out of line. And we were sitting, me and her were sitting and watching this movie called uh, The Iron Mask. Hallelujah. And then they showed this man seducing this woman, got in the bed, and, and, and I couldn't get, I didn't have the remote, I couldn't, I thought it was a clean thing and stuff, so I couldn't, but it, it, she saw it. And I apologize, she may have been too small to realize what I was doing, but I apologize, daddy, daddy, sorry. Daddy, sorry. Hallelujah. From then on, that's when I, I started buying Christian movies. Because I couldn't trust what was coming on the networks. Regular TV. Regular TV. Hallelujah. God was working in me then. What I was ignorant to, Brother John, God was opening my mind. You can't watch just anything. You, not just your, children, your wife and your children, you can't just watch anything. Why? Because whatever's got you captivated, that's time you could be in my word. That right there. You can't get that second back, that mini back. That you could have been in my word. Hallelujah. That's vanity. Is that going to save you? No, sir. Is that going to help you in life? No, sir. Is that going to further your, your walk with me? No. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'll be honest. It's not, Lord. It's not, Lord. Well, what are you supposed to be doing? Lord, I'll be about to get right back on this word here. Hallelujah. You're going to help me. And what I can't do, I'm, I'm dependent on you to help me. The more you open my eyes, the more I'm going to turn away from the things that I watch. The things that I meditate on. Huh? I know it's rough going this morning. Hallelujah. I didn't get no directions till I got up here. But I thank God for the direction. Read, son. Psalm 119.38. Establish thy word unto thy Do soul. what? Establish thy word unto now thy soul. Now how important is God's word to be established in your heart right now? Hold that, son. I want Psalms 112 and verse 6. So Jesse, you got you still got Jeremiah? Give me Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not evil. Read, read. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Read. I know. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Now what thoughts does God have toward us? Read. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Read. To give you an expectation. Now, the opposite of peace is you're in confusion. You're in fear. And you're warned. What did James say? James 4 and verse 4. He said, you are adulterers and you are adulterers. Amen. Praise the Lord. What's coming walls from among you? Come they not because of your lust. For you're biting the devour one. Oh, my God. Amen. We can't go. Read, read. To give you an expected end. I'm going to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. That's what I want right there. And ye shall go Psalm and Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me when I pray. But you shall what? Read. Then shall ye call upon me. You shall call upon and me. And ye shall go and pray unto me. You shall me. go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. I will you. do what? Hearken unto you. Read it. And ye shall seek me and find me. You shall do what? Seek me and find me. You'll find me when? When ye search for me with when all you, your not heart. If, not if. Ain't none of us lost anything that we didn't know what we lost. Many cases, amen, we'll backtrack ourselves trying to figure out what we lost to that. Hallelujah. Am I telling the truth? When you seek it, meaning it's more important to you than the present hour. I got to find whatever I lost. I'm not going to have no peace until I find what I lost. Why? Because it's of value to me. Jesus Christ said it like this here. What man having a hundred sheep if he lose one? He'll leave that, hundred, that 99, go find that one. He's not going to be content. That's why I thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The last verse in Psalm 119. He said, I was a, a lost sheep, but you sought me, came to get me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful. Read. 14. And I will be found of you, says notice, the Lord. Notice. You'll pray. You'll call. 
I'm going to answer. You'll seek me and, you go, and I'm going to be found of you. Read it. And I will turn away your captivity. Yes! I don't, it don't make no difference what's going on in a person's life. When we turn toward the way of his word, brothers and sisters, God obligated himself. Look, y'all look this way here. Dear God, uh, you know, in Hebrews it says he's able to, he saves unto the utmost. That means no matter how far man goes, no matter how low man is, God can reach down. But it's got to be a humility before that happens. Pride goes before destruction and a haunted spirit before a fall. When we neglect God's word, when we reject God's word, we're telling God, I do not want you. I'm not talking about the world. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking about God's people now. So no. Hallelujah. Who, who knows how much time we got? Nobody. Who, I'm talking about before Jesus Christ come for the church. Who knows that? Who knows it? Hallelujah. Or when I die before he come. Who knows where they going? So we have to seek God until we find God. And when we find God, we obey God. Somebody said to the best of your ability. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. He helped you do what you can't do. Hallelujah. When he talks about loving your enemies, doing good, the folks that spy for you, he's talking about the Holy Ghost helping you do that. Sure enough. Amen. You may do good for a little while, but then the, 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 the straw going to break the camel's back. And all that hatred that you had stored up is coming out How, that you tried to deal with on your own. Come on, Psalms 112 and verse 6. How important is it for our hearts to be established in this word here? Read, son. Psalm 112 and verse 6. Read. Surely he shall not be moved forever. Go up in the upper verses there. A couple of verses up. Read. Ver per verse 4. Verse 4. Until the upright there arises light. In That's the what darkness. I want right there. Now, are we not in dark? Uh huh. Brothers and sisters, we're right what Daniel said Israel was. To you, Lord, belongs. Righteousness and judgment to us belong confusion of face. I'm not talking about the government only. <laughs> we are a confused people, sure enough. The confusion comes when we know known truth and we just will not submit or surrender. Hallelujah. Read, son. He is gracious. He is, he is gracious. And full of compassion. And full of compassion. Talking about the righteous now. Talking about the righteous. Read. And righteous. A good man show a favor and lend it. Read. He will, he will guide, guide his, his affairs, affairs Read. with discretion. Read. Surely he shall not be moved. That's what I want right there. When times of trouble come and people are swept away in the judgment, God say he will not be what? Moved. Read. Forever. Forever. Read. The righteous shall be. Notice now God put a, he put a seal on that. I'm going to take care of him till I bring him home. I'm going to take care of her. Till I bring her home. Read. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Read that. Well, bless his name. Well, I'm telling you, even a sinner in the Bible got it right on it before he drew his last breath, didn't he not? He asked the Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Lord said, a day, brother, you going in with me today. All right, read. Seven, he should not be afraid of evil tidings. That's what I want right there. That's what I want right there. I, 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 ain't this nation scared? Ain't it now? Hallelujah. Amen. It would be something different if we had people in the White House, in the Congress, in the Senate that actually knew God. But he gave us our request and sent leanness to our souls. Read. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Read. His heart is established. He should not be afraid until he sees his, his desire upon his enemy. Hallelujah. His desire upon his enemy. We only got one. It's that dog. Hallelujah. And I'm planning on being right there when Jesus Christ put him in the pit. Show sure enough. Hallelujah. Our time is not long, saints. That's why it's so important. It is, it is of utmost importance. That we spend our time wisely. Amen. I mean, 
I'm, 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 I'm saying this, that as every second ticks by, every minute ticks by, I thank God for my family. I thank God for my immediate family, which is all of y'all. Amen. I thought about this getting out the shower one day. I'm a daddy to folks that are older than I am, been here longer than I am. I'm a daddy. Amen. I don't know how old Brother Willie is, but I'm, I'm Brother Willie's daddy. Brother John, I'm your, amen, I'm your daddy. Spiritually speaking. My precious wife, old I am, I'm her daddy. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to use the worldly term. I'm giving y'all sugar. Because in Psalm 119, he said, your word is sweeter to my taste. Sweeter than, why well, bless his name? Sweeter than honey. <laughs> huh? So that makes me a, y'all say it for me, a sugar daddy. Say, do you with me? Hallelujah. Well, y'all lighten up him. Because I'm trying to get drive home to your heart that this word is more important like David Prince or Job said, Lord, I love your word more than my daily food. I got to have it. I don't know what I'm facing tomorrow. I don't know what I'm facing later on this day. But I'm going to seek you through your word. And when I find myself, when I'm wrong, I'm going to get it right. But when I'm right, I'm going to praise you. Hallelujah. See, I don't say, I do look in the word to find myself if it's in a negative way, but even more so when I know I got it right. Amen now. Hallelujah. Why? It warms my heart. Hallelujah. It gives me courage so that when I pray, amen, praise God, I know ain't nothing between him and me. Sure enough. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's called a living sacrifice. Every day, all day. Amen. Praise the Lord. From what I, I, I eat to what, oh, y'all going away from hell. To what I meditate on. Huh? Back up, son. Back to 119. I want them two verses one more time. I want 20, 29 and I want 37. Psalm 119, 29. Read. Remove from me the way of lying. Remove from me the way of lying. And grant me thy law graciously. Read it. Verse 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Read. And quicken thou me in thy way. Read it. 38. Establish thy word. Establish thy word in what? Unto thy servant. Read. Who is devoted to thy fear. I'm what? Devoted to thy fear. Read. Turn away my reproach which I fear. Read. For thy judgments are good. Read. Behold, I have longed after thy priesthood. Lord, have mercy. Quicken me in hold thy it, righteousness. Hold it. I've longed. I've longed. I've longed. You know, in Psalms, I can't remember where it is, but he said, as the deer panted over the water, so my soul panted after thee. My God, my God. Y'all, please understand the preacher. He please understand. I'm, I want this. I want this. As long as there's breath in my body, I'm going to keep and continue going after what we're reading right here. Well, God's word is more important to me. When I wake up, amen, before I pray, hey, get the book. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That way my mind will be sanctified when I do get out and pray. Get the book. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm beginning to just read. How to read in Psalms 5. He said, Early will I seek thee, O Lord, in a dry and thirsty land. Psalms 5. It's in there. Amen. I'm going to seek you first. I'm going to seek you. But I'm going to seek you according to your word. I'm going to get down on my knees with the confidence that long as I walk in this precious way, you're not going to turn away my prayer. And this word, y'all look this way here, and as we pray God's word, it reveals to us really, literally, what God's will is for us. This is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Everything else is frills and thrills. A, a house, a car, a mate, Children, all of that's part of the blessing. Amen. But the truth of the matter is God reveals himself in his word to us. Look this way, that he might work through us. I want Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. I want that right now. And, and, and we'll let, let, let's look at 
the New Testament. I've been over the Old Testament all this time here. Let's read it. Read it. Read it. Somebody read Wherefore, it. Wherefore, my beloved, read. as ye have always obeyed. You have always obeyed. Not as in my presence not only. In, that's the 12th verse, ain't it? 12th verse. Read. Not but in my not, presence only, but even more so in my absence. Absence. Read. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. With fear Hold it. Hold it. He didn't say y'all work out your own. No, he said work out your own. It's individual. Amen. Salvation is personal. Ain't it now? Ain't it not? When he saved me, he, he didn't save my brother the same time he saved me. Huh? I didn't have the same experience that others had. Amen? For me, it meant different. Why? A lot of us wasn't where I was. That's why I, I love, I still love that song. If you have to reach way down. <laughs> Jesus can pick you up if you have to reach way down. Well, he had to reach way down for me. Sure enough. Hallelujah. But I thank God he didn't leave me where I was. Read! With fear and trembling, 13, for it is God. It is working. God. That's what I want right there. It is God that works in us, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. My time must be spent seeking after the things that please him. And then everything else will fall into place. Didn't he say it? Didn't he say it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And everything you need to be added, seek to please him. Seek to honor him with your life. You ain't got but one life over here, one chance over here. Use it wisely. Amen. Pastor, what's the message of the day? The message of the day is don't turn away. Don't turn away from God. Don't turn away from instruction. Don't turn away from God's word. Look at God through the eyes of his word and see yourself. See yourself. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word.